Hey all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're going to be talking about what we learned running F Sharp and production for five years. So today I'm sharing takeaways from Ian Russell's Celebrating Five Years in Production blog post, which is part of the 2024 F Sharp Advent Calendar. Ian is an active contributor in the F Sharp community and author of the free Essential F Sharp book. Now the blog post itself is short and sweet, so I would recommend going over there to read it before coming back here for my summary and takeaways. Again, this is linked here, and then of course would recommend checking out the other F Sharp Advent Calendar posts here as well. Okay, so here's a quick summary of kind of the systems that they built and the experience with F Sharp. So basically they were building a GPS aggregation SaaS product built with F Sharp over the past five years. It integrated with a bunch of external integrations, puts it together, and then I guess they have like an API to get the refined data out of it or something like that. Now at peak, it ends up processing about 10 million signals per day, which sounds like a lot, but you know, as Ian points out in the post, this really only turns out to be around 116 per second. So, you know, pretty medium sized, pretty doable with modern machines and modern software. But the complexity largely lies in its 450 external integrations, each with their own APIs, data formats, etc. And so there's a lot of like data munging, um, which, you know, is a common problem in software, but, you know, not always the uh, cleanest kind of thing to do. Now, the reason that they chose F Sharp is that basically they were allowed to use any kind of .NET or JVM language, and they decided that functional would be better for the team. And so they were choosing between Scala and F Sharp and eventually just decided on F Sharp. I don't think there's more details on that, um, but that's the general gist of the experience. Now we'll dive into like takeaways and stuff from this experience. So what is good about F Sharp? So Ian and his team found that it was relatively simple to learn. They said that they were able to onboard new engineers in a few weeks, which is, you know, pretty good for a new language. I'm sure onboarding here doesn't mean like an expert, you know, you can usually use a language for like years and still not know all the ins and outs, um, but at least to get up and running is pretty good in a few weeks. Now my take is that I think F Sharp is a simple language, but I would caution that parts of it are not simple and may take newcomers longer to ramp up. Like personally, I code with F Sharp in a pretty rudimentary way, mostly leveraging it for its types, its immutable values, and its list processing functions. But things like computation expressions, monads, recursion first, principles, etc., can quickly become like a lot more complicated. And so it really depends on the code base, I think, for how easy it is to onboard new engineers, especially those that aren't coming from functional backgrounds. Um, and like even me, I've been using F Sharp for a few years on the side, like I usually stay away from writing my own computation expressions, and I just kind of focus on pipelines, you know, simple list comprehensions, things that to me seem simpler um, than diving into the kind of more advanced, more FP-ish topics. The next thing they liked about the F Sharp is that it writes code that is succinct, robust, and performant. And I think this is part of what makes F Sharp so fun. It kind of forces you into the pit of success such that when things compile, it probably works pretty well. And I kind of think of it as a really great 80% language. Like it takes the good parts of many langs, making it very good at many things, but maybe it's not the best at any one thing. Like it's not going to be the very simplest language like Python. It's not going to be the most performant language like Rust. It's not going to have, you know, the most minimal syntax like Go, but it takes a lot of those things like the performance and the simplicity and stuff and repackages them all into one. So it's pretty elegant overall. I kind of think of it like it's as if we were writing code as bullet points. That's often what we can get with F sharp just because of all the built ins um, and ergonomics of the language. For more on this, and my opinion on it, you can check out why F sharp is a front programming language here. Another benefit is that F sharp gets the full power of the .NET ecosystem. So it can use most libraries natively, and there are plenty of F sharp wrappers on popular libraries to make it a bit more ergonomic to work with. Personally, I'm pretty surprised sometimes how easy it is to use C sharp libraries from F sharp. You can basically write C sharp in F sharp just without the little semicolon things. Like I've done this with my markdown HTML converters. And I did this to turn one of my, you know, F sharp advent of code solutions into a terminal display, um, really just using off the shelf popular C sharp libraries and just kind of plugging in the examples. Of course, you have to move things around, but basically it works just like C sharp does, um, just with a little munging. And finally, F sharps excellent type system is good for domain driven design, which itself is good for building software with limited unnecessary complexity. So I think DDD is a great idea, though sometimes it can be hard to implement. And I think usually this goes off the rails when you try to build too many software patterns that don't really exist in the real world, um, because then you start introducing more unnecessary complexity. 
And I think f -sharp straightforward powerful type system makes modeling domains easier, which I think it makes easier to communicate about because really it's just kind of like types and pipelines. Um, whereas in OO land, we often are talking about like objects and then we get into like patterns of objects and stuff. Um, but I don't really think it's an OOFP thing. I think you can do, you know, DDD well in, in either land, but just some of them kind of lean more into the patterns versus others. Related, my favorite book on DDD has most of its examples in F-sharp, and you can learn more about that book here. And so those are like the good things from F-sharp, um, from Ian's journey and kind of my like takes on them. And now we're gonna talk about what's bad about F-sharp. And really the only thing Ian says here is that the community is small. And what this means really is that there are few F-sharp libraries and there are few maintainers for those libraries. Now, I think this will probably impact you less than you think as you do have full access to the .NET ecosystem, including like all C-sharp libraries, which is, you know, a top five lang. But it is true that F-sharp just doesn't have as many F-sharp native libraries as a top 10 language would. And what this means is that there are less libraries that are built just for F-sharp and also that many of the libraries that do exist only get updated every now and then. Some of them haven't been updated for over a year. And, you know, again, I think this will impact you less than you might think because F sharp is pretty stable. Um, we don't ship breaking changes to the language or the runtime or anything that much. And so, you know, things sitting around for over a year without updates is probably fine versus like in JavaScript, it might break every year um, if you don't do these updates. But, you know, still overall, not as many maintainers, not as many updates getting pushed. So just less ongoing improvements overall. And I really do think that low adoption has been and remains the greatest risk and problem for F sharp long term, um, because this is kind of just a vicious cycle of not getting more adoption. You know, to learn more about these, you can check out how popular is F sharp in 2024, and then the state of F sharp in 2023. The next issue with this is that it might be hard to find F sharp developers. And I think this is probably true because the F sharp community is pretty small. So there's not that many people that actually know F sharp going in or like have used it significantly. Like even me going into an F sharp shop, like I've only used it on the side really. And so I'm sure there's like a ton of best practices that I'm just missing. But I would argue that there are plenty of devs out there who would jump at the chance to build an F sharp if given the opportunity and the ramp up is pretty graceful. If you haven't used F sharp before, so you could probably even get people who are just curious about functional programming, but you know, fair point, there's just not many F sharp devs, so perhaps hard to find people to use it, which again, scares more companies away. So vicious cycle of not improving adoption. And the last bit is that C sharp libraries are built for C sharp and .NET kinda is too. And so the truth is that C sharp is a top five language and F sharp is top 50. There's just less of an audience for F sharp than C sharp. And so C sharp does get more contributions to it, more support. Now, for the most part, this is fine. F sharp basically gets all the benefits of being a top five language without actually being one because we get the free libraries from C sharp and each .NET release basically makes F sharp faster um, without any extra work on F sharp side. But there are some downsides as well. C sharp is more object oriented. And so some designs don't really make sense in F sharp systems. Although I will say F sharp is pretty flexible, so you can do O and it just fine, but it just not might not be as ergonomic as if you were going F sharp functional first. And this does mean that some libraries and stuff do need some plumbing on the F sharp side to do the things you want, or to give you a good interface for doing these things, or to allow currying to happen nicely, or pattern matching or something like that. And so you might have to build your own little wrapper for that, or you might have to roll your own if that's just too much trouble and it's not worth it. And again, I want to state that like probably this will not get in the way of building stuff as much as you might think, but still F sharp is just not in the same league of support as C sharp is. And so that is definitely a downside that you might want to keep in mind. Now, would you choose F sharp again for building a production web app? So Ian says, given the choice, yes. But then I would say realistically, most companies won't give you that choice or buy-in to such a small language, in which case C sharp is a fine choice. It is well supported and is slowly incorporating features from F sharp, allowing you to code better systems. And personally, I've never had the pleasure of writing F sharp professionally. Everything I use it for is really just personal projects that I enjoy building. And my companies that I've joined have always ended up using a top 10 language. So this is like JavaScript, this Python, this is Golang and stuff like that. And so the truth is it will be hard to find a job using F sharp and to get your company to use F sharp. And so you just might not get the professional 
opportunity to do this. But that doesn't mean it's not worth using, and it doesn't mean that F Sharp is a bad technology. One of the big reasons I keep using it and sharing about it is because F Sharp is so much better in so many ways. But I don't have an expectation that F Sharp will eventually win. It's been around a while, like, you know, 30 years, and never to my lot, knowledge has it breached the top 20. What has happened in that time, though, is more of the popular languages have started incorporating pieces of these fringe languages to make them better. This is like types and Python and Elixir, Link and C Sharp, and the rise of Gleam as an alternate for Elixir for, you know, type safe functional first. And then, of course, C Sharp gets its union types and stuff like that. And moreover, I found that working with F Sharp has helped me develop practices that work well in any language, from biasing towards immutable to constraining side effects with impure sandwiches to making invalid states unrepresentable. And ultimately, the biggest risk or problem with F Sharp is the lack of adoption, which is self is a vicious cycle that is hard to get out of. Without more adoption, we won't get the hype to warrant more adoption, and so F Sharp remains a fringe technology, even though it's technically better in many ways than those that are more powerful or popular than it. And so here I do have to agree with Ian. You know, if you can choose F sharp for your project and it makes sense, but you probably won't be able to as soon as you start mixing companies and collaborators and stuff in on it. And so at that point, just use whatever you can and take your learnings from F sharp to try and make the software ecosystem just a little bit better. So if you're using C sharp, maybe go for minimal APIs, record types, and you know, eventually use their union types whenever they start using it, bias towards immutable, use impure sandwiches, etc 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 because at the end of the day you might just not be able to choose whatever technology you want next so thanks for reading this i'm experimenting with more reactiony posts again so let me know if you liked it or not or have feedback on how to make them better there's always a balance between like reading more of the original work to adding my feedback and also making sure that this isn't like a 45 minute video so i'm still trying to find the balance if you've got some time i'd highly recommend checking out the original post so here's ian celebrating five years in production post with more details on kind of the system that they were building and how they used F-Sharp to do that. Um, also, the other awesome posts in F-Sharp's 2024 advent calendar are there. There's like 25, 30 of them. So a lot of good stuff to read. And then if you like this post, you might also like one of these, why F-Sharp is a fun programming language, how popular is F-Sharp in 2024, and the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap, which is basically my philosophy for building web apps these days. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.